So thanks so much, Raziel. Um, and I'm really excited to be here um, to talk about a new project uh, that I think is uh, pretty cool. Um, so TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers, what's that all about? Um, <laughs> so this all comes back to when I actually first joined Google back in 2014. And as you can imagine, there were a whole bunch of internal projects that I didn't actually know about as a member of the public that sort of blew my mind. But one in particular came about when I actually spoke to Raziel for the first time. And he explained, um, and he was on the speech team at the time working with uh, Alex, who you just saw. Um, and he explained that they used neural network models that were only 13 kilobytes in size. Um, at that time, I only really had experience with image networks, and the very smallest of them was still like multiple megabytes. So this idea of having a 13 kilobyte model was just um, amazing for me. Um, and what amazed me even more was when he told me why these models had to be so small. Um, they were running them, they needed to run them on these DSPs and other embedded chips in smartphones so Android could listen out for wake words like, hey Google, while the main CPU was uh, powered off to save the battery. Um, these microcontrollers often only had tens of kilobytes of RAM and flash storage, um, so they simply couldn't fit anything larger. Um, they also couldn't rely on cloud connectivity because the amount of power that would have been drained just keeping a radio connection alive to send data over would have just been uh, prohibitive. So that really uh, struck me, that conversation and the continued work um, that we did with the speech team, because they had so much experience doing all sorts of uh, different approaches with speech. Uh, they'd spent a lot of time and a lot of energy experimenting. And even within the tough constraints of these embedded devices, uh, neural networks were better than any of the traditional methods they used. Um, so I was left wondering if they'd be really useful for other embedded sensor applications as well. And it left me really wanting to see if we could actually build support for these kind of devices into TensorFlow itself um, so that uh, more people could actually get access to it. At the time, only people in the speech community really knew about the groundbreaking work that was being done. So I really wanted to share it a lot more widely. So, <laughs> uh, today um, I'm pleased to announce that we are releasing the first experimental support for embedded platforms in TensorFlow Lite. And to show you what I mean, here is a uh, demonstration board uh, that I actually uh, have in my pocket. Um, and this is a prototype of a development board built by SparkFun, and it has a Cortex M4 processor um, with 384 kilobytes of RAM and a whole megabyte of flash storage. Um, and it was built by Ambic to be extremely low power, drawing less than one milliwatt in um, a lot of cases. So it's able to run on a single coin battery like this um, for uh, many days, potentially. Um, and I'm actually going to take my life in my hands now uh, by trying a live demo. Um, <laughs> so let us, let us see if this is actually, um, it's going to be extremely hard to see unless we dim the lights. There we go. Um, so what I'm going to be doing here is by saying a particular word um, and see if it actually lights up the uh, little yellow light. You can see the blue LED is flashing. That's just telling me that it's running inference. So if I try saying yes, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I knew I was taking my life into my hands here. Yes. There we go. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly move that out of the spotlight there. <laughs> so um, as you can see, it's still far from perfect. <laughs> but it is managing to do a, a job of recognizing when I say the word and not lighting up when there's unrelated conversations. Um, so why is this useful? Well. First, this is running entirely locally on the embedded chip. So we don't need to have any internet connection. 
Um, so it's a good, useful first component of a voice interface system. And the model itself um, isn't quite 13 kilobytes, but it is down to 20 kilobytes. Um, so it only takes up 20 kilobytes of flash storage on this device. And the footprint of the TensorFlow light code for microcontrollers is only another 25 kilobytes. Um, and it only needs about 30 kilobytes of RAM available to operate. So it's within the capabilities of a lot of different embedded devices. Um, secondly, um, this is all open source. Um, so you can actually grab the um, code yourself and build it yourself. Um, and you can modify it. You can actually, I'm showing you here on this particular platform, but it, it actually works on a whole bunch of different uh, embedded chips. And we really want to see um, lots more uh, supported. So we're keen to work with the community on collaborating uh, to get more um, devices supported. Um, you can also train your own model. Um, just something that recognizes yes isn't all that useful. But <laughs> the key thing is that this comes with um, a tutorial that you can use to actually um, train your own models. And it also comes with a data set of 100,000 utterances um, of about 20 common words that you use as your training set. And that first link there, the AIY projects one, um, if you could actually go to that link and contribute your voice to the open data set, um, it should actually increase um, the size and the quality of the data set that we can actually make available. So that would be awesome. And you can actually use the same approach to do a lot of different audio recognition to recognize different kinds of sounds and even start to use it for similar signal processing problems like, uh, you know, things like predictive maintenance. So how can you try this out for yourself? Um, if you're in the audience here, um, at the end of today, uh, you will find that you get a gift box and you actually have one of these in there. Uh, <laughs> and all you should need to do is remove uh, the little uh, tab between the battery and it should automatically boot up pre-flashed with this uh, yes example. Uh, <laughs> So you can try it out for yourself and let me know how it goes. Just say, say yes to TensorFlow I liked as the... Uh, <laughs> um, and we also include all the cables, so you should be able to just program it yourself uh, through the serial port. Uh, now, these are the first 700 boards ever built, um, so there is a wiring issue. Uh, so it will drain the battery. It won't last. It will last more like hours than days. Um, but uh, that will actually, uh, knock on wood, be fixed in the... Uh, <laughs> final product that's shipping. Um, and you should be able to develop with these in the exact same way that you will with the uh, final shipping product. Um, and if you're watching at home, uh, you can order, pre-order one of these from uh, SparkFun uh, right now for, I think it's $15. Um, and you'll also find lots of other um, instructions for other platforms in the documentation. Um, so we are trying to support all of the, or as many of the um, modern microcontrollers that are out there that people are using as possible. Um, and we welcome collaboration with everybody across the community to um, help unlock all of the creativity that I know is out there. Um, and I'm really hoping that I'm going to be spending a lot of my time over the next few months uh, reviewing pull requests. Um, <laughs> and finally, um, this was my first hardware project, so I needed a lot of help <laughs> from a lot of people uh, to actually um, help bring this prototype together, including the TF Lite team, especially Raziel, um, Rocky, Dan, Tim, and Andy, um, Alistair, um, Nathan, uh, Owen, and Jim at SparkFun were lifesavers. Um, we literally got these in our hands middle of the day yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that they managed to pull it together is a massive tribute. Um, and also Scott, uh, Steve, Arpit, and Andre at Ambic, um, who actually designed this process and helped us get the software going. And actually a lot of people at ARM as well, including a big shout out to Neil and Zach. Uh, so this is a, still a very early experiment, um, but I really can't wait to see what people build with this. 
Um, and one final note, um, I will be around uh, to talk about MCUs with anybody who's interested at the breakout session on day two. Um, so I'm really looking forward to chatting to everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Uh, we really hope that you try this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's early stages, but you see a huge effort uh, just to make this happen. I think we, we think that it will be really impactful for everybody. Um, now, before we go again, and I promise this is the last thing you hear from me, um, I want to welcome uh, June, um, who's going to uh, talk about how by using TensorFlow Lite with the HTPU delegate are able to train these teachable machines. Thanks, Raziel. Hi, my name is June Tate Gans. Uh, I'm actually one of the lead software engineers inside of Google's new Coral Group, uh, and I've been asked to give a talk about the Edge TPU based Teachable Machine demo. So, first, I should tell you what Coral is. Coral is a platform for products with on device machine learning using TensorFlow and TF Lite. Our first two products are a single board computer and a USB stick. So, what is the Edge TPU? It's a Google-designed ASIC that accelerates inference directly on the device that it's embedded in. It's very fast, localizes data to the edge rather than the cloud, doesn't require a network connection to run, and this allows for a whole new range of applications of machine learning. So the first product we built is the Coral Dev Board. Now this runs, uh, this is a single board computer with a removable SOM. It runs Linux and Android, and the SOM itself has a gigabyte of RAM, a quad-core A53 SOC, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and of course, the Edge TPU. Now the second is our Coral Accelerator board. Now this board is just the Edge TPU connected via USB-C to whatever development system you need, be it a Raspberry Pi or a Linux workstation. Now this teachable machine shows off a form of edge training. Now, traditionally, there's three ways to do edge training. There's k-nearest nearest neighbors, weight imprinting, and last layer retraining. But for this demo, we're actually using the k-nearest neighbors approach. So in this animated GIF, you can see that the TPU enables very high classification rates. The frame rate you see here is actually the rate at which the TPU is classifying the images that I'm showing it. Uh, in this case, you can see that we're getting about 30 frames per second. It's essentially real-time classification. And with that, I actually have one of the, our teachable machine demos here. So if we can turn this on. There we go. Okay. So on this board, uh, we have our uh, HTPU development board uh, assembled with a camera and a series of buttons. Now, each button corresponds with a class and lights up when the model identifies an object from the camera. First, we have to plug this in. Now, every time I take a picture, uh, by pressing one of these buttons, it associates that picture with that particular class. And because it's running inference on the Edge TPU, it lights up immediately. So once it's finished booting, the first thing I have to do is train it on the background. So I'll press this blue button, and you can see it immediately turns on. This is because, again, it's doing inference in real time. Now, if I train one of the other buttons using something like a tangerine, press it a few times. OK, so now you can see it can classify between this tangerine and the background. And further, I can even grab other objects such as this TF light sticker. It looks very similar, right? It's the same color. So let's see, what was, it? What was the class I used? Yellow, OK. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so now, even though it's a similar color, it can still discern the TensorFlow light uh, logo from the tangerine. Oh, sorry. Tangerine. There we go. <laughs> So 
you can imagine, in a manufacturing context, your operators with no knowledge of machine learning or training in machine learning can adapt your system easily and quickly using this exact technique. So that's about it for the demo. Uh, but before I go, I should grab the clicker. And also, I should say, we're also giving away some Edge TPU accelerators. For those of you here today, we'll have one available for you as well. And for those of you on the live stream, you can purchase one at, at coral.withgoogle.com. OK.